How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, we got stuff to talk about here today. Four months after the promotion was first announced, All Elite Wrestling has revealed a TNT as their television home. AEW and Warner Media issued a press release this morning announcing that AEW will begin airing live weekly matches on TNT in prime time later this year. Further details on when the weekly show will begin, what date will be on, the length of it, and its name have yet to be revealed. The press release touted a multi-platform approach that will include Warner Media's Bleacher Report live service and pay-per-view. BR Live will be the exclusive digital streaming partner for Double or Nothing in the United States, with the event also available via traditional pay-per-view. Double or Nothing is taking place at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas on Saturday, May 25th. The buy-in, AEW's pre-show for Double or Nothing, will stream live via Warner Media at AEW's social media channels. The press release hyped. AEW will be focused on fast-paced, high-impact competition, and will offer fans, quote, less scripted, soapy drama and more athleticism and real sports analytics, bringing a legitimacy to wrestling that it has not previously had. Wrestlers will also be given more freedom to explore their characters and highlight their athletic abilities. Introducing statistics to wrestling for the first time ever, AEW will raise the stakes for its matches and deepen fan engagement by tracking each competitor's wins and losses as the wrestlers pursue championships, analyzing their moves, assessing damage to their opponents, and providing insight into their winning streaks. And TBS has some comments here. Tony Khan says, Wrestling fans have wanted and needed something different, authentic, and better for far too long. AEW is answering the call. AEW is about more than wrestling. It's about a movement fueled by wrestling fans who have been undeserved or underserved and perhaps even disappointed by what the industry has produced in recent years. We'll talk more about this after the break and so much more Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Person sends a text right here. Did that listener that sent the WWE is still great email send anything yet? I presume you mean the guy that said there was no way that AEW would be on TBS or TNT. No, he is not. But I'm... Perhaps it's coming. We can just... We can only hope that he is madly typing away into his text message machine to send me an update here. So, yes, as noted in the first segment, AEW is going to TNT. No further information as far as, like, date, time, but they did specify that it will be a live show in prime time on TNT starting this fall. So, it's official, and now we wait for more details. Perhaps we'll get some over the Double or Nothing weekend, which is in Las Vegas, Saturday, May 25th. I'll be there the entire weekend. Obviously, I have the wrestling show with Ed on Friday. Our own convention is that weekend. I'll be there for StarCast with Dave and a number of other things as well. So we'll give out all that information later if you want to head out there. If you're heading out there, we'll tell you how to get involved with all of that. But, yep, yeah, big news, AEW on TNT. And if you're not getting Double or Nothing on pay-per-view, you'll be able to stream it live through Warner Media which basically means their streaming service Bleacher Report live. So there you go. Any thoughts on this, Mike? Hopefully, for everyone's sake, the future pay-per-view here, Double or Nothing, ends up better on Bleacher Report live than the last time they attempted a pay-per-view, which was that golf match between Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods where the whole thing went foobar and they had to refund everybody's money back and everybody got to see it for free. Hopefully they've got some of that stuff worked out before this show makes it on there. But uh, yeah, hey, it was an exciting morning. You know, They finally announced it. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that it happens to be on TNT. Turner has been rumored for a long time. We talked about it with Dave last week on this show about, you know, BR Live made a lot of sense when it came to a streaming platform. Number one, it's owned by Turner. Number two, there's nothing on it right now. They need to build it. And any chance that you have to build something like that, wrestling has always been a, a great way to do it, whether it's been just regular TV or pay-per-view or cable television. Wrestling's always been there at the start of it to, to, to help it and give it an audience. And I'm sure that's what Bleacher Report Live and Turner are hoping for their streaming service as well, too. So 
We'll just have to see how this whole thing pr- uh, plays out. The big uh, negative about this deal, there are no TV rights fees. This is not a massive money deal per Wait, se. Wait, we don't know any of that. We well, well they, 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 they did not announce that. You're right. They they seemingly it's been reported though that this is not a in some circles that this is not a right steal. Yeah, that but that was is, incorrect. So that's the so there is a right steal. Yes, they are they are making money off this television deal. Okay. Any any idea a rumor of how much money that would I be? I don't so think that, it's anywhere near what WWE made off their television of deal. Of course. But they are of they course. are making money off of the deal. So that's good. So okay. So if that's the case, that's one big positive on top of the, the, the other big positive, which is the visibility of being on one of the number one cable networks that I guess arguably at times is the number one cable network in all of television. So that that's important in being able to, to try to move people and, and make an impact. It's hard to believe that it won't be on Wednesday if everything stays the same when it comes to TNT well, I got and something NBA. on that. I got something on that because Tuesday so, and Thursday is currently the, the the NBA's current nights. WWE WWE for whatever it's worth believes the show is going to be on Tuesday. Now the before this deal was announced, the word that Dave and others had gotten was that it was not going to be on Tuesday, but. For whatever reason, All Elite went through and continued trademarking Tuesday Night Dynamite. So they're either going to be on Tuesday, or I guess it's possible that maybe they would be on a Wednesday, and the idea of Tuesday Night Dynamite is some sort of online show, like a preview or something like that, that maybe would lead into the Wednesday show. But they they want Tuesday Night Dynamite. It's going to be used for something. We don't know if it's going to be the television show yet. We don't know what day it's going to be. But I don't know how WWE would know, but they believe the show is going to be on Tuesday. So we will know soon enough, I presume. All right, let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? Going once. Going hey, twice. Bri- hey, Brian. Hey, Mike. Yes, it's, uh, what's James up? Nicoma. What's up? Uh, so real quick, po- point to, before I get to my actual point, something Mike point out, pointed out about the BR Live service. Um, I used the BR Live service recently to stream point Champions League and Europa League matches, and I would actually go as far as to say it was terrible. Like, there were a lot of problems, like buffering, and I had a pretty good internet, and it was having problems streaming matches. Oh, so that's boy. something to take into uh, account. Yeah, I, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it'll get better. Uh, so my main point about AEW that I want to make is that <clears throat> I think in this deal, a lot of people are going to want to compare AEW to other companies like WWE or WCW or Impact. And I don't think that's fair. I think the best way to compare AEW in terms of television ratings is to itself six months down the line. Because when you look at AEW's roster, you look like a WWE. You have like a lot of what you call like mainstream stars like Undertaker's in the periphery and Randy Orton, people know him. Miz is on a reality show. The WWE brand name is a big deal. That brings people in. McMahon's are television stars. When you look at the AEW roster, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that, could be television stars, but I don't think the like I don't see Kenny Omega being on on like inside the NBA on Tuesday and people going I need to watch AEW. But I think it's more of like it's kind of like an expansion team. You have a lot of people that with the right tr- like the right help could be national television stars. Could help the ratings go up, and it'll be interesting to see the ratings where they are when the show starts, where they'll be in the spring. And I think with that lot, they're very clearly in a we need to make stars mentality rather than like what Impact did, which is let's try to get as many stars from WWE as possible. And I think AEW will very clearly, it's kind of a bold prediction here, I think it'll be more a situation where they started a number and it'll go up kind of like a Nitro, whereas compared to Impact where they're at a number and they try to get it bigger and it just stays there. Well, it's it's all it's it's impossible to say. We'll have to wait and see. I want to thank you very much for the call. I mean, as I as I mentioned a few days ago, I mean, there has been no better time for an alternative to spring up literally since the beginning of the Monday Night Wars. I mean, yes, WWE is making a tremendous amount of money. They're making more money than they've ever made before. And by the way, when AEW kicks off, they're going to be making even more money. So like The big differences between today and 1995 are WWE is not losing $6 million a year. WWE is a $7, $8 billion company. So they're not going out of business anytime soon. But when it comes to fan engagement in WWE, 
It has not been lower since 1995. This was not the case in 2010 when Impact decided that they were going to go head-to-head with WWE, and it was a massive... Actually, the very first day, it was not a flop. The very first day, they got destroyed by WWE, but they did better than they'd ever done before. And very, very quickly, it went off a cliff, okay? I do not think AEW is going head-to-head with Raw or SmackDown, so it's going to be different in that sense. But if there ever was a time to attract the disgruntled wrestling fan who's sick of WWE... There's no better time since 1995. I don't know what that means. I don't know how successful they're going to be. I have no idea. All I know is that when I was at the first StarCast and we had the Q&A with myself and Dave and Bruce Mitchell and Wade Keller, and I don't remember exactly how it got started, but I basically said, how many of you are here Because you are disgruntled with WWE. Like, every single person raised their hand. Like, there is is a vast audience out there of people who, they want to watch wrestling. They even want, here's the thing, they want to like WWE. They don't hate WWE. They want to like Raw. They want to like SmackDown. But WWE is not giving them what they want. And so, if there is an alternative that can give them what they want, now is the best time to do that. We'll see. We shall see. That fella, by the way, emailed that everyone's asking about. Mm. This fella, Mike, he quotes from the press release, less scripted, real sports analytics, and more athleticism. He says, for guys who have no character or mic skills and only do flips, AEW is going to be a bust. They can't compete with WWE in their dreams without soapy dramas and good storylines. Entertainment draws, wrestling doesn't. I was unaware the roster of AEW had no character, no mic skills, and they could only do flips. I'm going to keep Mike's email here for the future. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? This is William from Tracy, California. Yes, William. Um, I was called... Yes, I was calling to ask a question, but before I get to that, I wanted to congratulate AEW on the TV deal with TNT. I think it's incredibly healthy for the wrestling business and also for WWE as a whole, healthy for them as competition. Hope so. My question is, my question is, I wanted to ask you regarding the men's money in the bank ladder match this Sunday. I believe it comes down to. Sami Zayn or Andrade, and originally I thought Drew McIntyre a few weeks ago, but because of what happened on Monday, I believe Braun Strowman is going to interfere and cost them both him and Corbin this Sunday, so I believe it comes down to him, Sami Zayn, or Andrade. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, if it comes down to those two or if you have somebody else in mind. Okay, I I, got to let you go. There's a lot going on there in the background of that call, but... Money in the Bank coming up on Sunday. We have 10 matches, including the Money in the Bank ladder match. Men's match. We got Ricochet, Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre, Sami Zayn, Finn Balor, Ali Andrade, and Randy Orton. And Ali got his shot at the last pay-per-view. I can't imagine it being Randy Orton. Baron Corbin's already going to be feuding with Seth Rollins, so I don't think it's going to be him. I could see Ricochet winning. I could see Drew McIntyre winning. I could see Sami Zayn winning. I could see Andrade winning. Those are those are the four. Actually, it, it, the, the reality is any of them could win. Vince can decide on the day of the show and just do whatever he wants. you got to remember that a lot of times, I shouldn't say a lot of times, but on, on a few occasions, they have given the Money in the Bank briefcase to somebody and then immediately regretted it. So it's not like there's great long-term thinking put into this by Vince McMahon. So I think it could be anybody. Do you have a pick, Mike? Not Baron Corbin? Well, I was thinking Drew, but then again, it's like watching, trying to consider, think of him carrying that case down every week. I know other people have done it, but Andrade, it might be a good move to put it on Andrade. That way, it's just another weapon that Zelina can have at ringside. And it's always been a way, I think, where if they're not sure about pulling the trigger on somebody and making them a champion, that would be a pretty good way to do it. And we'll have to see where they go with Andrade. I like his push right now. I think they could do a lot with him, and he could 
could be a much bigger star for them than he currently is. So I'll stick that feather in his cap right now. Although the the big star and the the big title win out of any of those people is going to at some point be Drew McIntyre, I think. This fellow here says the paranoia with the anti AEW fans is real. They're still in denial. You know what I like today? You can call, or you can text, or you can email. I don't care. 844-411-5411 is the phone number. Text message is 425-780-7566. And email brian at wrestlingobserver.com. Those are all on the front page of wrestlingobserver.com, by the way, if you didn't hear them. I want you, if you are an anti-AEW fan, I don't want you to contact me and tell me why they're going to fail, why you think they can't succeed. I want you to contact me and tell me why you don't want them to succeed. Why do you want AEW to fail? Are you concerned that they will put WWE out of business? Are you concerned that everyone from WWE will want to leave? Are you concerned? What are you concerned about? Like, I do not understand how somebody could want AEW to not succeed. Like, if you're a wrestling fan, if you're a fan of pro wrestling, why would you want it to fail? Even if you're only a fan of WWE, the last time the WWE had strong competition, it spurred them on to vast improvement over a very, very miserable period of their existence. So if you're one of those people that wants AEW to fail, I want you to tell me why. I don't care why you think it will or won't. I want to know why you don't want them to succeed. That's what I want here on this show today. This person here says, All in featured a man coming back from the dead with an army of penis druids to get revenge on his murderer. On the same show as a guy who needed to win the NWA championship to pay tribute to his father and all of the legends that came before him. It is ridiculous to say they have no characters and they're pushing their product as being less cartoony. It's just as cartoony. They just pretend in a way where they're all in on the joke together. Well, that was all in. We don't know what AEW is going to present on television. We have no idea. I, I... presume they're going to do some comedy they're going to do some wrestling they're going to do some old school stuff but i i I am skeptical you will have a penis druid army on tnt i could be wrong been wrong before I, I yeah I I wouldn't think so but you know then again this is what they've produced if there's being the elite and there is the last show that they had and that's the only thing anybody can really go off of so far and you, we do hear the show is going to be different we do hear they want to to harken back and there's echoes of mid south and whatever else it's going to be that they're going to do but. There is nothing to go off of right now. It's why this whole thing, even with the deal, is just still the speculation station because other than making it official on a station that everybody had figured that they were going to be on anyway, at this point, still nothing has changed. I mean, they've hired more people, but still, we're still in the same kind of holding pattern here. We still don't know what day it's going to be on for exactly, you know, how long it's going to be on, what hours it's going to be on, and and what they're going to do. I mean, nothing has been formed with this thing yet. We'll have a little bit of a better idea, I would assume, after the pay-per-view but still there's completely nothing to go off of yet when it comes to what kind of product they're going to produce other than frankly what they've already put out there as far as year says you think there's a possibility the reason they didn't announce the day of the week for the show is because turner is going to wait and see how events leading up to the fall do in analytics so they can decide what day of the week is best yes no. we're, we're well we're gonna know we're gonna know this summer because they're running live weekly television so you have to book buildings and sell tickets. So at some point, they have to put tickets on sale. And so at some point, we're going to know what day these shows are that they're running because they've got to sell tickets to these live events they're going to televise. But I don't know when it's going to be. But this is also, I mean, the NBA takes precedence. Their, their high-end dramas or whatever they're going to make the, the centerpiece of their promo of their television season, which is not AEW, sorry, you know, that's going to take precedence. So they can do all the analytics on what wrestling fans want and all that sort of stuff. It's got nothing to do with that. They're going to put the show on where they can put the show on where they obviously want it to do well, but still those other things are going to be, you know, unfortunately for wrestling fans, far more important than AEW and should be, frankly. Sitting Duck from Vancouver here. Today is a day of celebration for the entire industry. This AEW TV deal is great news for everyone trying to make money in this business. Well, hopefully that's everyone in this business. If you're in this business not looking to make money, I don't know what you're... Well, if they got a rights deal, that's that's good. 
This person says, "I am. This is this is a an anti AEW fan. I am concerned that AEW will kill professional wrestling." He says, "Oh God, it should be a television show like Russo booked in ninety eight ninety nine. Okay, well, I don't think it's going to be like that. Says the vast majority of anti AEW fans are WWE fans who have been brainwashed into thinking anything that isn't a WWE product is a bingo hall. WWE to many people is their sports team, and every other team is the enemy. Okay. All right. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's up? Hey, Brian. Hey, Mike. This is Bruce in Huntsville. Yes. And so, something I just wanted to point out it might be a little bit long winded, but there is a question at the end, I promise. Um, so more and more, I feel like I'm being subjected to how WWE builds to matches rather than being allowed to enjoy them. And what I mean by that is they're the same cookie-cutter matches over and over and over again. Uh, take the Money in the Bank matches, for instance. Instead of playing to everyone's strengths and instead of building anticipation to make the viewers want to see the match that they're advertising, they put the competitors in these shoehorn tag team matches where nobody shines, uh, they do some tired paint-by-numbers singles matches where some geek grabs a ladder and climbs it. I mean, nothing I'm seeing on TV makes me want to keep watching. It's very clear that the creative well has run dry, and they're they're running off both casual fans and some hardcore fans. It's very clear that there's not much retention there. And I'm not sure what the problem is. Is it scrambling to fill TV time? Is it Vince? Is it the moon phase? I mean, it's Vince. Why, why do you think that can't it's Vince? We've talked about this a million times. I want to. I want to thank you very much for the call. It's just Vince. He doesn't book long term. Therefore, there is no anticipation for anything because every week he just changes it. Do you know that last night on SmackDown there was a women's tag match with the Kabuki Warriors? <laughs> why do you laugh? Oh, I don't. No, sure. Nothing. Go ahead. Well, for your information, Mike, Paige uh, stated that they chose that name. Uh, Kyrie and Asuka. Except they wanted to be the Kabuki Girls. And WWE said, you can't be girls. But you can be warriors. But you're not allowed to say war. But warriors is okay. Anyway, so they're out there having this match. And Billy and Peyton are doing commentary. And the announcers are asking them, about matches that they have lost. For example, on SmackDown, Kyrie Sane beat Peyton on one show. And uh, anyway, the point of this is, and Bailey and Naomi also beat him on Raw. And the announcer was like, shouldn't these women be getting championship matches? They beat you guys in non title matches. And the Iconics actually said, that's an antiquated notion. It is antiquated. That if you beat the champions, you should get a championship match. Now, granted, they're heels and everything like that, but I just heard that and I was like, well, it's kind of funny you say that because that is, in fact, how things often work in WWE. I'll get more into this after the break because there's another one on top of that. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Here's another one for everybody as far as like the long-term, in-depth, intense, thought-out booking of WWE. So last night on SmackDown, we had Shane McMahon, Elias, Daniel Bryan, and Rowan versus Roman Reigns and the Usos. And so they have this match, and the finish has Shane McMahon pin Jay Uso to win the match. Shane McMahon pin Jay Uso to win the match. So then, today, they announced that we have a match coming up at Money in the Bank, and it is actually a pre-show match, believe it or not. Daniel Bryan's on the pre-show. Daniel Bryan and Rowan are now facing the Usos in a non-title match coming off the Usos losing to Shane McMahon, which probably means that the Usos are going to beat Daniel Bryan and Rowan and then likely, maybe, get a championship match afterwards. Why wouldn't you just have the Usos win that match, pinning Rowan, and then set up a tag team championship match at the pay-per-view? What is happening here? 
I don't know, because if you don't want them to go back to Raw with the belts, you would have them win there and then lose and then have them go back to Raw with their tail between their legs because they lost to the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. But That's right. They already lost last week. What's going on? Well, that's it on top of the fact that they already lost last week. So it's, yeah, um, planning. It's, it's idiotic. It's, yeah. It drives me crazy. It. Listen, if AEW can do one thing, and that is not book this nonsense... God, I was watching WWF from the year 2000, their their glory year, like their biggest money year ever, as far as like actually making money on professional wrestling. I'm not talking about TV deals, but actually making money on wrestling, their biggest year ever. I'm watching Raw and like Steve Blackman and Al Snow are out there as a team doing this head cheese gimmick every single week. And then like one week I'm watching and all of a sudden they're facing each other as enemies in a tag match. And I thought, What? What did I like? What did I miss here? They don't explain it on Raw. I'm sure something happened on SmackDown. They don't even bother telling me. I'm just sitting here watching this match. And then I watch again this week, and now Al Snow and Steve Blackman are back together again as a team. I was so. And this was back. This was back when they actually had the continuity editor. I was like, this is the glory period everybody remembers as the best. This sucks. Why is this so hard? I can't take it anymore. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. Calm me down, caller. You're on the air. What's up? Oh. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Chris from Long Island. Um, I'm going to Money in the Bank this week, and uh, I just, uh, after that AEW incident, uh, you know, that I, I just have this weird gut feeling that I'm going to be, you know, less invested in WWE and more invested in AEW. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Well, you're allowed to still be invested in WWE. I mean, you don't have to give up just because AEW announced television. You, you can you can like both. You it know? is but it, it is possible, yes, to like both. This is the shiny new toy, so you should be someone. If you're a fan, you should be. If not excited about it, you should at least be feeling better than not having another promotion start up, even if you don't love everybody that's involved or whatever you think it's going to be or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, if you don't like AEW... There's still a zillion and one other wrestling companies out there that you could probably fill your void with, which is, again, this is going to be interesting, too, when it comes to the $50 price point. Uh, when it comes to BR Live, because, you know, they do have free stuff up there, like the Rich Eisen Show and Dan Patrick and all that sort of stuff, but how much are they going to charge for weekly, or how much are they going to charge a month for their product? I, I don't know what it is. You know, will you need to do that to watch AEW? You probably will. What's going to happen in Canada, where there is no TNT? How are things going to work up there so there's still a lot to be worked out here but purely as a fan i mean again if you just like wrestling how could this be a bad thing for you all righty this person says observer reporting 49.99 pay-per-view price point for double or nothing seems really high for a brand that needs to build an audience no no if if you're a fan of aw you're going to get that and i mean this is let me tell you a story about the Monday Night Wars and and uh, and WWE's horrible business at the time. Okay, so they lost six million dollars in ninety six, ninety five, ninety six, and it was the most money they ever lost on professional wrestling. And Nitro started out and started beating them in the ratings, and eventually WWE began to turn things around. You you want to know one of the first things that they did that helped turn things around? One of the first things where Vince McMahon at first was like ready to let Bret Hart go, but then he told Bret, actually, we can pay for your deal. Do you want to know what one of the first things that turned everything around was? They had these in-your-house events. WWE used to do four pay-per-views a year. Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam. And then they moved to having these secondary shows. And the secondary in-your-house shows were like $19.00. And the main shows were 35 bucks or whatever it was. So these were like half-price shows for two hours. And when WCW started to get hot, they were running pay-per-views every month, full-length pay-per-views at full price every month. And WWE's thought was, well, if we charge less, we're going to get more people buying our shows because they're only nineteen ninety-five or whatever. So they're losing their ass, and WCW's beating them. And they're doing all these pay-per-views every month. So WWE decided, you know what? We're going to 
turn these secondary shows into full three-hour shows, and we're going to charge full price for them. You want to know what happened when they they charged full price for those in-your-house shows? They sold more pay-per-views at a higher price point. Because throughout the history of wrestling, if you raise ticket prices, you sell more tickets. If you raise pay-per-view prices, you sell more pay-per-views. Now, granted, if AEW was charging $200 for this pay-per-view, they're not going to have that many buys. Uh, The reality is they would get buys. They would still have people paying $200 because hardcore wrestling fans will pay money for what they want to see. But I do not think that $49.99 is a prohibitive price for this show. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. And if they they charge half of that, they're going to do the same number of buys. That's it. No. Number one, that is a standard price for pay-per-view, whether you like it or not. You know, it's it's standard anymore, and that's the way it goes. Number two, it's look at their fan base. People want to talk about analytics and stats. So what do we know about their hardest core fan base? They have more disposable income than others. They travel well. They've been willing to kick out money for merch and all that other. Basically, they've been able to kick out money, and that's what they know. So, you know, 50 bucks where, you know, fight's going to get a cut of that. There's going to be other people to get a cut of that money, too, you know, which is one of the reasons why it is up so high. I mean, it's not... Again, if they tried to price this as if it's one night only, it's Pacquiao and Mayweather, it's McGregor and Mayweather, okay. But forty nine ninety nine, while it is a little obnoxious, again, any more. I mean, what what is the standard ROH pay per view now? Is that thirty nine ninety nine? Which pay per view? Like like ML like an MLW and ROH Impact. I mean, what what or I guess not MLW, but Impact and ROH are they thirty nine ninety nine? I think right it, now? it all depends on the provider, but they're around they're around that that price point so there you go this person says how do i watch double or nothing if i don't have cable it'll be on the uh warner media streaming service so that would available be for purchase i think through br live it'll BR be available live, yeah. in in canada at least through fight um it's i guess everywhere available everywhere but the united states that way and then through traditional pay-per-view means and i'm sure i'm sure there's going to be other things I, I don't know who owns uh like some of the other package streaming services and things like that but through direct tv and all that sort of stuff it i believe it's going to be available first says what do you make of the wade keller post show caller spoke to wwe creative he claimed triple h is very frustrated with vince mcmahon any truth to this okay i didn't listen to all of it I I will say that I'm skeptical of the idea that Triple H is backstage pouting, okay? But, I mean, it doesn't take an insider to come to the conclusion that Triple H is frustrated. I mean, he does all of this stuff, and he builds up all of these guys in NXT and women, and he makes stars out of them on NXT, which has no television besides the NXT TV show on the WWE Network, and they get called up, and nine times out of ten, they're just nothing. Of course you're going to be frustrated. You, you can't not be frustrated. I don't think that he's going to loudly complain about it. He's not going to pout about it backstage. He's not going to quit. But there's no way to not be frustrated. It, you, you could not not be frustrated by this. It's impossible. should mention, by the way, the Raw ratings. I struck out this week. The show did better than I expected. I thought this show was going to die. And granted, there was no basketball competition... But I, I still just, I, I watched the show and I was like, who's watching this? Even my buddy Craig, for the first time in his adult life, didn't even watch Raw this week. But I was wrong. 2.58 million viewers, 2.39 million second hour, 2.08 million in the third hour. Uh, the reality is the lack of basketball, people watch the show. But the other take home here is, as we've mentioned a thousand times, it doesn't matter if Raw is live or taped. The idea that everybody looks at the spoilers and decides not to watch, that just doesn't happen. If it happens, it's in very, very minuscule numbers. This was a taped show. The spoilers were everywhere. Baron Corbin made two appearances. I mean, you knew that going in if you saw the spoilers, and people still watched the show. Because live versus tape doesn't matter. Now, one thing about that that's that's kind of noteworthy is the reason they got this huge deal on Fox is because Fox believed this is live sports. Live versus tape does matter. And the reality is it doesn't. So that's just a stat right there. Just a stat. Let's do one more call. You're on the air. What's up? Hey, y'all. It's Ian from San Antonio, Texas. Y'all, what's up? Well, 
Hey, y'all. How you, how you hanging over there in good old Seattle, Washington? All right, get with it. What's up? Now, here's the thing. You know, this AEW thing, first of all, I don't see why anyone wouldn't be excited about it. I mean, like, it is kind of weird that it's TNT of all places also. So, why? you know, can you imagine? I'm sure. Well, because just still, the irony of it, you know, 17 years ago, and I know there was like a lot of people, you know, there's different people in power now, but I mean, they lost wrestling because they didn't want it there, and now they, you know, paid money to have it back. So that's pretty cool. But, you know, these ratings and stuff for Raw, I honestly, I got to say, Brian, I'm kind of shocked myself because I thought that, you know, this show was just boring. And last night, normally I think SmackDown's better. Last night I was really bored watching SmackDown. I didn't even pay attention to it as much as I normally do. I like SmackDown but they keep last losing night. My interest. I don't know. To me, just, you know, there's nothing. I don't know if it's just that, you know, I love Kobe Kingston, but I don't know what you said. He's just still out there throwing pancakes and smiling and, or whatever. Yes, it was a show. But I mean, like, when he does stuff like that, it's just hard for me to buy him as a champion. And I really, really was in support of him winning that belt at Mania. But it's just like, you know, why does he have to keep doing this kind of stuff? And it's just like when he tried to sound like a tough guy after he came out smiling and throwing pancakes and clapping his hands, it's just kind of take him seriously. And uh, I don't know. I just, it's, it's just weird. And I just, you know, I, I was less bored watching SmackDown than I was Raw, but, you know, I was still more bored than I normally, and I never have missed Raw ever since, you know, probably like 2009. But I mean, like, it's just... I know, I know. I want to thank you very much for the call. I can't take anymore. We all know it. Raw sucks. SmackDown was better last night, though. I will say that. And Kofi does need to quit throwing those stupid pancakes. But I don't. I think Kofi does pretty good promos. I think that that the people are very much into Kofi. He he's he's more over than anybody else on the show for the most part, and they're keeping him very strong. And I mean, they're. They are trying with Kofi. I have to give them credit. He always stands tall at the end. Even last night, there were 9 million guys down there trying to beat him up, and he still stood tall and, and hit his Trouble in Paradise kick on Sami Zayn. Hope that doesn't mean he loses the title on Sunday, but they're doing everything they can with the guy, so i got to give him credit. And there was a lot of good wrestling on the SmackDown show last night. I didn't think it was a bad show. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. This person said a quick Google search would tell you that Kabuki Warriors is a fighting game on the original 2001 Xbox. So maybe next week they'll be the Kabuki experience. How about maybe next week if they actually want to be called the Kabuki Girls, they can just be the Kabuki Girls. I think that's okay. I know that, like, it's 2019, so it's politically incorrect to call them girls. But, like... Although the Kabuki is so much better. <laughs> it just reminds me of... I can't remember who I had. I think it was on the show, but I had somebody who was a midget wrestler. And you're not supposed to call them midgets anymore. And Or maybe it was on a show. I, I can't remember where I saw this. But anyway, he was really mad. Because he was like, I want to be called a midget because if you stop calling me a midget, you're taking away my livelihood. I'm a midget wrestler. And he's very upset about it. And like, if, if Kyrie and Asuka want to be the Kabuki girls... Then let them be the Kabuki girls. They don't have a problem with it. That's what they want to be called. We don't have to change the name because somebody else finds it politically incorrect. Do you right? remember when? Do you remember when midget tossing was a thing for a minute at bars? And yeah, they, of course I do. And they actually had midgets where it was just like, no, don't outlaw this. I'm making money. Like rat me. Yeah, and you're taking away my wall. livelihood because somebody else is insulted by a word that I'm not insulted by because that's how I identify myself and that's how I make money. Still could have been the Sky Pirates. Would have been cool. We already have Sky Pirates. Who? A Kyrie and, and EO. Doesn't, well, that doesn't matter anymore. That's NXT. Well, EO's going to come up exist. eventually. Maybe they'll be. that's how they'll differentiate the teams. Why? You need I a whole know. fleet of pirates, don't you? We're out of time, Except everybody. one pirate. We got more later on today. Filthy Tom's going to be on. He's a and Observer Radio. We'll talk about the best of the Super Juniors, AEW, WWE, and so much more. So check it out later on, WrestlingObserver.com, the place to go for all of these shows. 10,000 archive shows. Every show that we do is archived for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there and sign up. You won't regret it. And we're out of time. Thanks, Mike, as always, callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.